Hi guys, so this is my GUH1 vacuum tube tesla coil So if you've been watching my channel lately guys, you'll know I've been working on this I feel like now we're at the point where it's not going to get much better Changed quite a lot of things on this schematic, so this is going to be the final version out now guys So I want to make this as easy as possible for you guys to recreate Obviously if you do recreate this, you need to be well versed in high voltage electronics And uh, be totally competent in what you're doing Obviously I take no responsibility for what you guys do but that said, I want to put out there the best schematic we can. So I feel this is that. And to make sure this is easily recreatable, I'm going to have my wife build this up. So we're going to give her a pile of components, give her this schematic and a bit of a to-do list. And we'll see what happens, guys. So, wish her luck. Here we go. So this is just a quick reminder of what the original looks like, guys. Hi guys, so let's get this coil built then. So this is our GU81 and firstly we want to make some filament connections. I've got a socket but if you guys don't, don't worry about it. If you hold the tube in this orientation, these are the filament connections um, which you can solder directly to by just heating the pre-existing solder and wiring straight to them. Right, so firstly we need a transformer to drive our filament. There is many ways that you can do this, but I've chosen to do it by getting a medium sized toroidal and adding turns, windings until I've gotten up to the desired voltage that we need. Right guys, so as you can see we've got this wired up and plugged in. We've got 240 volts on our primary and we, as you can see we've got the 12.6 volts required for our filament. So guys, as you can see from the schematic, we need a low value capacitor across the filament which we will do now. We found a suitable capacitor and I'm just going to extend the legs on it so we can put it across our filament. The values of this capacitor are 3.5 nanofarad and 1.5 kV. Right, so we put in the capacitor on the filament and we want to get it as close as possible. So the next thing we're going to work on is our primary coil. Our primary coil consists of 40 turns of 1.5 mm stranded wire. And we also need to wind our feedback, which consists of 12 turns of the same gauge wire. Our form for this will be a piece of 110 mm diameter waste pipe. So this is our 110 mm diameter waste pipe. I'm going to start by winding my feedback coil. So we're going to start at this end approximately 10 to 15 millimeter gap and wind 12 turns in this direction right guys this is my feedback and i'm going to wind my secondary now i'm going to leave a gap of between 10 and 12 millimeters and wind in the same direction as my feedback Right guys, so as you can see, that's that job done. Now we're moving on to our secondary. So this is our form. It is 70 millimeters in diameter and we're going to cut it at 300 millimeters long. A good tip for this guys is to put a bit of card around it so you get a nice straight cut. So if you need to, take a big file and smooth out the edges. But as you can see, this is pretty good. Right guys, this is our secondary form. I'm going to use 0.5 four millimeter enameled wire. I'm going to leave a gap of 12.5 millimeters at either end and wind in between. Right guys, you can either wind it by hand or use a simple jig like I'm going to. I'm going to start by securing my wire at one end. If you guys are going to do it this way, you may need an extra pair of hands to help. That's our secondary done. It took the two of us about 15 minutes to do it. We secured it at both ends with a bit of super glue and bicarb. Right guys, so we've completed our filament transformer as well as the capacitor across it. We've completed the primary and the secondary as well as the feedback. Now I'm going to focus on the power supply which consists of two microwave oven transformers which have their secondaries in series. As you can see we found a pair of microwave oven transformers that are roughly the same size. 
So I'm just wiring these up to get them tested. Hopefully you can see we've connected the, these transformers by their sachets. Sachets, hey. Hopefully you can see that I've started by connecting these two transformers by their cores. So because we've connected these two transformers by the core, we should hopefully have a high voltage output from these two terminals. I say hopefully because our primaries are connected in parallel and our secondaries are connected in series. Therefore, we want them to work together, not opposingly. And to make this happen, we need to connect our primaries out of phase. The easiest way to check this is connect our primaries, which I've done, and check for output. If we get high voltage output, then that's fine. But if we don't, we will need to reverse one of the primaries. So I've connected the primaries to the variac. I'm going to apply a small amount of voltage to the primaries and see if we have output. Like I said before, if we have output, then that's correct. If not, we will have to reverse one of the primary connections. As you can see, we have output, which means we're wired correctly. So, now that we have our transformers dealt with, I'm going to move on to the next part of the circuit, which is our voltage doubler. We need suitable diodes and a suitable capacitor. So we'll start with the diodes. This schematic calls for three strings of four 12 kV 1 amp microwave oven diodes. The three strings are in parallel. We don't have any microwave oven diodes. So I'm going to use these instead and make up the value. So these are 10 A10 diodes. They are 1 kV 10 amp diodes. We need to make up an equivalent diode with the same voltage and current. So I'm going to use these to make up a suitable diode to replace these. So here I have five strings of 10 1 kV diodes, which of course gives us 50 kV. And at 10 amps, we easily cover the current demands of the circuit. So, the next thing I will do is solder these five strings in series. Moving on, we're going to look at the next component of the voltage doubler, which is this capacitor. This is the capacitor bank that I've made, and this is the schematic for it. We've made an AC capacitor using electrolytic capacitors. The original schematic calls for 12 UF 5 kV. So, we've made up two strings of 14 capacitors in series. We then took those two strings and connected them with by their positive connections, making a total of 28 capacitors. And as you can see, we take our output from the two remaining negative connections. There is a resistor across each capacitor. This is an 82K resistor and it is used for bleed down and balancing. The capacitors are 450 volt at 330 UF. So that said, that gives us our doubler capacitor. Moving back to our diode that I showed earlier, I have now soldered these together, added an extra string, so now we have 60 kV, 10 amps diode. The next thing we're going to look at is this trap. As you can see, this is made up of a 10 watt, 47 ohm resistor and a 12 turn parallel induction. Right guys, so the schematic called for a 10 watt, but I could only find a 5 watt, so we'll have to see if that will work for us. As you can see, I've wound 12 turns of 1 mil wire around the resistor. To move on to this can Cantagoras. <laughs> Right, so guys, next I'm going to move on to this tank capacitor. The schematic calls for 2 times 470 pico in parallel. We've got a couple of options for this, but I'm going to use either this one or this one. This is 1000 pico, this is 800 pico. Next, I'm going to turn my attention to this capacitor here across the diodes. It calls for a 470 pico 15 kV capacitor. I'm going to use this Soviet doorknob capacitor, which happens to be the same rating. Next, I want to draw your attention to this. This is SCR. 
This is there to interrupt the ground connection when we want to use staccato operation. Next, we're going to look at this component here. This is a 240 volt, 150 watt tungsten lamp. In parallel with this tungsten lamp, we have an 8 nanofarad capacitor, 1500 volts. Here we have our 150 watt tungsten lamp and we just need to attach the 8 nanofarad, 1500 volt capacitor across these two terminals. So we found a suitable capacitor and we're just tucking that in parallel. So guys, we have our pile of components, let's get building. Right guys, first we need to make some connections on the back of the tube. As you can see from the schematic, grid 3 is tied to ground, which is also the centre point of the filament connections, which I've done already. We need to tie grids 1 and 2 together, which I've also done. Next, we need to tie grids 1 and 2 to one side of our series tungsten lamp. For this, I'm going to use a piece of 1.5mm wire. I'm just making the connections to grids 1 and 2. And then to one side of our series tungsten lamp. The other side of the lamp will then connect to our feedback, which is here in the circuit. Sorry guys, I've made a mistake. As you can see on the schematic, grid 3 is connected directly to our neutral connection. The CT actually goes through the SCR, so we can't connect those together. So we sorted out that mistake, and it is now exactly as it shows in the schematic. G3 is tied directly to neutral, and the CT is connected to one side of the SCR. As now that we've got that sorted, we can sew our tube into the socket. just plug this in for a final test of our filament transformer while it's in its socket and we've got 12.7 on our filament which is perfect. The next job I'm going to do is connect trap to our anode. The easy way to find out the anode of the tube is to look simply look inside it. On this side it's just plain, on this side which is the anode you can see an A-shaped piece of metal inside and this is where I'm going to connect the trap. Next, we're going to move on to putting this power supply together, which consists of these microwave oven transformers and our voltage doubler and this capacitor. I'm going to start with a warning about these microwave oven transformers. As you can see, one side of our secondary is connected directly to neutral, which is effectively ground. This means that the cores of these transformers will be live at one half of the output voltage, so must be insulated from ground. So I've started by taking my low side of my secondary and connecting that to neutral which is this connection here on the schematic. The next thing I'm going to do is connect my voltage doubler capacitor to the high side of my secondary which is this connection here on the schematic. So I've connected our diodes and our doorknob capacitor and that completes our power supply. So now we can move on to connecting up our tube and primary and the feedback. So the connection I'm making now is grid 3 and the other side of the SCR to neutral. Next I'm going to connect one end of my primary to the output end of the voltage doubler capacitor, which is this connection here. So guys, I've connected up the other side of my primary to my anode, which is here. While doing this, I've also added the tank capacitor, which is here on the schematic. Next thing I'm going to do is connect up my feedback, which is here on the schematic. I'm going to take one end of this and connect it to our series lamp. I'm just going to put a block connector onto there. The other end of the feedback connects to our neutral connection, 
which I'll do now. I'll solder this connection. We're about ready for testing. I've bridged out the SCR so it will run in continuous mode. If it does fail to oscillate, we may need to reverse the feedback windings. Right guys, first test. Cover up that feedback lamp. Right guys, we've got the tungsten lamp covered up. Let's give it a go. Next thing to do is get the staccato wired up and give that a go. Let's see this output. Right guys, so that kind of answers our question. I had a question I wanted to know that if somebody else could take the schematic and build up a decent coil from it. So this obviously answers that question. Thank you to my wife for doing this for us. Excellent output, well done Shelley. So obviously if you're building this yourself guys, you need to take proper safety measures, proper fusing. Uh, make sure you take every precaution you can because this is dangerous high voltage obviously. I only do this if you really know what you're doing. I don't want to preach to you guys but I just want you to be safe. Thanks guys, hope you enjoyed it. Yes guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and there will be more videos to come soon. Thanks guys.